Good evening. I am Dr. Adya Mehra, Junior Resident at the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, and the topic for my paper presentation is a case series on computer tumor guided microwave ablation therapy for hepatic malignancy. The objectives of my study are to highlight the clinical utility, technical aspects, and role of computer tomography in thermal microwave ablation of malignant hepatic lesions to assess performance of microwave ablation in comparison to other local regional therapies in terms of complication rates and tumor necrosis on follow-up. Image-guided thermal ablation is a minimally invasive technique widely used in the treatment of tumors in various organs with many ad advantages like excellent tolerability, easy repeatability, higher efficacy and accurate targeting of the lesion. Radio frequency ab ablation has been the modality of choice since decades. Microwave ablation is a relatively newer modality and utilizes dielectric hysteresis to produce heat. Polar or water molecules in the tissue are forced to continuously realign with the oscillating electric field at 900 to 2500 MHz, increasing the kinetic energy and the temperature. RFP uses electric current between frequencies of 3 Hz to 300 GHz, delivered through an electrode which forms a circuit through uh, through grounding pads which, which are attached to the thighs or back of the patient with a temperature range from 60 to 100 degrees Celsius. However, this is changed by tissue impedance and by buildup of charred tissue around the electrode. There is higher local tumor pro progression in case of bigger lesions. There is higher heat sink effect that is, the ab ablation is unpredictable due to blood flowing close to, to, to the tum tumor which reduces the effective thermal energy delivered and it cannot be used in patients with cardiac device. Microwaves can easily propagate through, through tissue with low conductivity and readily penetrate charred tissue. This, this delivers higher intratumoral temp temperatures upward of 100 degrees Celsius in a faster time, larger volumes and less pain. Microwaves also has a simplified setup and inherently avoids the risk of grounding pad bonds. It is also relatively resistant to the heat sink effect thereby producing more homogeneous and larger ablation zone and thereby it is emerged as the local tissue therapy of choice for more challenging lesions. So 10 cases that underwent microwave ablation for hepatic malignancy were considered, including those which are close to vessels, lesions larger than 3 cm, and those which are close to the surface, limiting the use of RFA. Pre-procedural -pre imaging is, is usually thoroughly reviewed on both ultrasound and CT to, to assess the feasibility of the lesion to plan the entry site and the positioning. The lab parameters, the coagulation profile of the patient is optimized and patient is taken up for the procedure under general anesthesia. Microwave systems have made three main, main elements, the first being the microwave generator with wattage and time display, an option for track, track ablation and display of the tumor edge temperature. Uh, the microwave antenna is, is connected with the co cable to the generator and transfers microwaves into the tissue. These, these antenna can, can, can be classified on physical and radiation properties and are usually 14 to 17 gauge in size. The power and time for ablation is, is decided according to the device and manufacturer specific values which are based on the lesion size and the theoretical ablation zone which is predicted. So newer microwave systems have waterproof high power applicators in which the coolant liquid runs along the shaft of the antenna enabling higher power to be delivered in a shorter time. Uh, on all the procedures are, are done under general an anesthesia with suspended ventilation at the time of the applicator placement to avoid any movement and this is done under constant cardiorespiratory monitoring. Antenna is placed under precise ultrasound guidance and check, check CT is done to confirm the position and adjuvant techniques like hydro dissection, uh, that is in, infusion of saline can, can be performed to protect nearby structures like bubble or diaphragm to prevent in inadvertent thermal injury. On completion of lesion ablation, tracked ab ablation is, is performed with intermittent power and the diameter of the ablation zone at the time of treatment is ideally 5 to 10 mm greater than the treated lesion on all sides. The major complications can be vascular, which, which are bleeding and thrombosis, biliary by bile duct injuries and biloma formation, unmarking with lesions adjacent to the bile duct. Liver abscess can be seen in high risk patients, and pro pro prophylactic antibiotic therapy is a must. Tumor healing can also occur when the lesion is subcapsular, uh, and com complete needle tract ab ablation with cauterization and antenna withdrawal is protocol. The mechanical complications are relatively common. Uh, so, in, in lesions adjacent to the diaphragm, as is seen here in segment 8, uh, hydro dissection was, was done for better visualization of the lesion on ultrasound. And post post ablation check, check CT showed development of minor pleural effusion, uh, which developed. So, the follow up assessment is done based on the imaging characteristics and the criteria which have been defined by the LIRAT treatment response. So non non viable is, is then the tumor has no lesional en enhancement or treatment specific expected enhancement pattern is seen. 
when the lesion does not meet the treatment specific pattern or the viability criteria, it is called equivocal. But the tumor is viable at if, if at any point post treatment there is presence of nodular mass like or thick tissue along the treatment zone which which shows arterial based hyper enhancement or the washout appearance or an enhancement pattern which is similar to the lesion pre treatment. Uh, as as is seen in, in this case, within the treat, treatment zone there is a nodular arterially hyper enhancing tissue seen on one of so this is a viable tumor. Some normal appearances, one to three months post treatment, we, we can see some intratumoral gas foci in linear peripheral enhancement of smooth wedge parenchymal enhancement around the ablation zone, which can be due to the parenchymal perfusion changes and the granulation tissue. Intralesional hyperdensity is seen on plain CT reflecting the necrotic tissue and hyperdense medial tract can be seen. More than six months post treatment, the, the enhancement usually resolves and the zone in, in the leaf. Looking at some case, case examples, case 1 is of a 74-year-old male, case of non-alcoholic steer to hepatitis related disease showed a less than 3 cm lesion uh, which, um, which showed arterial hyper -en enhancement on CT with washout and diff diffusion restriction on, on MRI. Uh, so the post-procedural -post CT showed an ab ablation zone with, with a margin of at least 1, one cm or more around and no other major complications except a small subdiaphragmatic hematoma. And the follow-up MRI in six months shows no enhancement or restriction within the uh, within the treatment zone. So this is a non-viable tumor. The second case is a 63-year-old male with chronic liver disease, and the CT shows a uh, near to three three centimeter lesion in segment eight, which is arterially hyper enhancing with definite washout in the delayed phases. Uh, so the post post procedural CT shows no arterial enhancement. However, the margin in the ablation zone is only three to five mm on each side. So on the five month follow-up, the patient came with ASP levels more than 10,000 and the follow-up CT showed a new hyperdex insufficient component which showed definitive washout in the delayed phases. So this was a viable tumor. The third case is of a 52-year-old male case of deep decompensated cirrhosis with total hypertension with raised ASP levels and the CCT abdomen showed a small non-rim arterially hyper-enhancing lesion with washout close to the gallbladder in segment 7. So the post-procedural check CT showed an ablation zone with margin more than 1 cm on all sides and no arterially enhancing component. However, in the follow-up CT at 3 months, a hypodense collection with hypodense content within was seen with minimal dilatation of bile duct, which showed significant progression uh, on, on the 6-month follow-up MRI. So this was a bil uh, biloma formation, which, which is a rare complication. So majority of the reviewed cases chosen for microwave ablation were lesions of bigger size or in challenging locations and both these cases showed viable tumor on follow-up imaging. Minor complications like pleural effusion, subdiaphragmatic hematomas were seen in three patients. Major complications in the form of pneumothorax and biloma formation on follow-up were seen in one case each. So the theoretical advantages of microwaves generating higher temperatures in a shorter time period, thereby with higher treatment efficiency and larger ablation zones, may make it the choice for challenging cases. And overall patients are also uh, sick Significantly more comfortable as the hospital stay is, is shorter, there is less need for analgesia and less of com complication rate. Radiologically, it is also more, more uniform and predictive, uh, predictable ab ablation zones can, can be achieved. And microwave ab ablation is a valuable local regional therapeutic tool for hepatic malignancies and appropriate case, case selection and treatment can drastically alter the clinical course. These are my references. Thank you.